thank you for joining us. Um, we are aware that you probably had a lot of screen time in the past year, um, so and some boring sessions maybe. So we're going to try and be as informative as possible and give you some very interesting points, quick points about our institutions. And I'm going to kick this off with a guessing game. Uh, what you're seeing on your screens at the moment is a logo and a I slogan. I don't think we can see it. Sorry, Christina. Sorry? I don't think we can see it. It's your screen. We've got, I think it might be in Siobhan's Chavon, one. Oh, Leave I me. can see your screen, Christina. Oh, sorry, I see it. Sorry. Yeah. Cool. So what you should be seeing is a an infinity uh, sign yeah. and a logo, um, a slogan underneath, which says when infinity is just enough. So yeah. what I wanted you to to think about is what uh, this company might be and what it does. And Googling is allowed. Uh, colleagues at other institutions feel free uh, to participate as well. We've got about 10, 15 seconds. Um, before I need to switch on to the next slide. So what do you think it is? Do we have a chat box here or can we ask students to maybe unmute themselves? Yeah, we have a chat box so I can I can call on people or they can put their hands up. Um, so we can we can do that if I put the yes. Yeah, so if any, any of the uh, six will want to put their hand up, that would be great. And I can ask you to speak. So if anybody has an idea what this is, um, you're not normally so shy, so maybe have a go. I'm sure you do know what it is, or could could uh, proffer a guess. Anyway, anyone? It's no hands up. Oh, not, uh, uh, Tom, Tom's got his hand up. <laughs> Just as a backup, in case any students didn't want to didn't hazard a guess. <laughs> um, that's fine. That's fine. Um, the name of the company is a bureau and the reason why you probably haven't been able to find it on google is because it's a fictional company and this is a company that i created together with another four students um, during my time at aston university i was an aston student myself and what we did uh, in our second year in the business college um, was for us to set up a company from scratch and we were supposed to come up with everything, the logo, the name. Um, we manufactured cars, so we had to come up with a decision on where we're going to build them, um, how many employees we're going to have, how many, uh, how much we're going to pay them. And the point of the exercise was for us to see what a business um, involves and what challenges we might encounter and how we can best tackle them. So hopefully I've managed to capture your attention in the beginning at least. Uh, my name is Christina Dimova. I work at Aston University which uh, won the University of the Year Award by The Guardian last year and I've given you an example with the way we teach at Aston for the majority of our courses. Um, I've given an example from our College of Business and Social Sciences um, but this is also the case with um, engineering courses like mechanical engineering for example. Um, where students would be again working in groups um, to build a car from scratch uh, from their first year. Um, and this concludes with a competition at the end. Um, so they are very basic, you know, don't expect a Formula One car, but it is good enough so that they can compete at the end. And students in our health sciences, medicine, for example, students would have patient contact from their first year. So we're trying to build as many hands-on elements into our teaching as possible so that students can implement theory into practice. And more about our campus, we are um, based in the city centre of Birmingham and everything is located in the same place. So it's a campus university in the city centre of the second largest city in the UK. Um, you've got your accommodation, teaching facilities, sports and library all located within five minute walking distance. And we've got about 15,000 students, um, about 3,000 internationals coming from more than 130 countries. Um, and Birmingham is a very dynamic city. You're never more than 10 minute uh, walking distance from the main transport links, um, the entertainment or the shopping areas. 
once traveling becomes an acceptable concept again. Um, in terms of entry criteria, we can accept um, English language at GCSE level as long as it's a C uh, or 4 and above. And depending on which course you're applying for, uh, we've got um, courses that require anything between BCC. Um, the majority of our courses ask for BBB and some courses would ask for AAA. And again, depending on which course you want to apply for, we might ask you for certain subjects. Um, so chemistry uh, course, for example, they would ask you to have B in chemistry and so on. And for next year, uh, students who are not UK nationals and can't be eligible for the home fees in the UK. Um, at Aston, we have some funding opportunities. We've got scholarship packages of anything between 2000 to 8000 pounds. Um, and we've got an automatic scholarship. So if you've got A, B, B and above, um, you can be eligible for anything between two to five thousand pounds and all programs um, students on all those on all Aston programs can apply for those except for medicine. And I think um, this is my last slide, just a few key pointers um, as to why you should consider Aston at this point of your journey. Um, at least these are the reasons that I um, was looking into when I was considering universities. Um, I didn't realize how important the student support was up until the time when I came to the UK. Um, so Asna has a very strong professional student support, um, a very welcoming multicultural environment. Um, placement opportunities was another thing that I was looking into. Um, I wanted to gain some work experience before I even graduated. Um, and the majority of the courses at Aston offer this opportunity. Um, and I've done my placement at Airbus, which manufactures companies, um, manufactures planes. Um, let me know if you want to know uh, more about it later on in the questions. Um, and location. Uh, Birmingham is a very dynamic city and the university is a campus university. So I wanted to make sure that everything is close together um, and I can enjoy um, what the city has to offer. And that's it from me. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm handing over to my next colleague. And I believe my colleague Holly is now going to share her slides. Hi, uh, I am. Yes, I'm just trying to get um, City's presentation up. There we go. Can everybody um, see it? Yep, we can see it. Excellent. Thank you. I'll um, take your lead, Emma. Emma, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry. Right, no Sorry. <laughs> so hello everyone again. My name is Emma and I am from City University of London. Next slide please Holly. So just to begin with, um, City is actually part of a collegiate group of universities or collegiate group of the University of London, which is a collegiate group of colleges, part of the University of London. Um, and what that means for our students is that you have access to um, a larger network of students, the student community across London. You have also access to numerous different clubs and societies and additional facilities such as sports facilities, accommodation provision, and libraries across London. My colleague Jamie from Royal Holloway is also part of the University of London. So if you are thinking about London, I would definitely recommend looking to see what universities are part of that federation. And um, because as you can see, the students have lots of added benefits um, as being part of that. Next slide, please. So where is City? So as you probably might have guessed, we are in the city, so we're very central. Our nearest nearest tube stations are Angel, Farringdon, Barbican. Um, we're really close also to King's Cross. So we really have an ideal location, um, especially because 
obviously we're ideally located for the businesses and professions which we are training our students to go into but of course all the fun exciting things that London has to offer and I know I probably don't have to sell London to you you've probably been there you know the city it's a great city it's been voted consistently the best um, city for students um, by the QS um, rankings so you would definitely have um, a good time there next slide please And just to zoom in on the campus itself, as you can see, this is the campus. And what I love about City is, although we are based in central London, you still get that kind of community feel, even though you are in a big city. Um, all, the, all the buildings are really close together. Accommodation is five to 10 minutes walk away from the campus as well. And it doesn't matter if you're studying business, if you're studying psychology, nursing, you are all on the same campus um, and that adds to kind of the experience and the community feel that you get as well. Next slide, please. And these are our courses. We have five schools at City. So we have the School of Arts and Social Sciences, um, where we have uh, notable programmes in journalism, economics and psychology. We have the business school. Um, formerly called TAS Business School, which is considered one of the best business schools in the country. We also have a School of Health Science, unfortunately not medicine, but as you can see, we have language sciences, radiography, nursing, mid midwifery and radiography. Um, we also have the City Law School, which is one of the oldest law schools in the country. We were in fact the first law school in London to teach students through the whole legal training. And finally, we have the School of Mathematics, Computer Science and Engineering. Next slide, please. So our students, we have about 11,000 undergraduate students at City and nearly half of those students are international. So it really reflects the city which we are, we are based in, really international, over 160 different nationalities represented um, at City. And each year we have around 3,500 new students currently studying um, each year on, on the first kind of their first year with us at City. Next slide, please. So over the past five or six years, City has really invested in the facilities on campus. And you should really see that um, if you if you take one of our virtual tours, for example, um, we have brand new labs, brand new sports centre, brand new library, um, brand new um, bar, <laughs> brand new law school. Um, so there has been a lot of investment now, which is obviously really great for the students, but the experience inside and obviously outside the classroom as well. Next slide, please. And a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is obviously the degrees that we offer. But I think one of the best kind of parts about going to university is the, the student experience outside of the classroom as well. Um, that starts in the accommodation. We guarantee accommodation for um, your first year if you apply for a certain deadline. But we have an excellent student union. We have over 100 different clubs and societies on campus. And we have the largest student sports centre in central London. Next slide, please. Last few slides. Um, so career planning, this is an integral part of your time with us at City. Um, with every single degree course, you will have the option to do work experience, to have um, you know, a job placement if you want to, to do that. Um, and we really do make sure that it's kind of a tailored career service for you. Um, as you can see, lots of opportunities um, in terms of work placements, but also networking opportunities, um, presentation, linking you with inside industry experts as well. Um, and also, if you are thinking about starting up your own business, we have lots of ventures on campus that can help you in both um, gaining um, you know, money and capital towards your idea, but also developing your business idea. We have some really great success stories you can find on our website. Next slide, please. And just to give you an idea of who we are linked with um, and where kind of our students go, the next slide, hopefully, 
um, we'll show you exactly who we uh, work with. I'm not sure if it's working. Oh, or maybe it skipped it, don't worry. Um, so for entry requirements, um, we offer A-levels, we offer, as you can see, we have between three A's or two B's and a C. It really depends on the course. So I really encourage you to look at our website and um, look at our individual course pages there. You can see that the fees there, we do offer a scholarship as well. Um, and in terms of accommodation fees, um, we've really sub heavily subsidised that for you because we do know London is more expensive, um, especially for students coming to um, from a different country. And um, so that starts at £170 per week for a central London location, which is really great. And I think the next slide will just kind of indicate um, you if you wanted to scan your your, your phone um, at the barcode, you can speak to one of our students on the course. Um, you can also attend an online event. Obviously, the in-person events aren't happening at the moment, um, but we have lots of online activity for you. Or you can book a meeting or chat with me after today, and that's my email address. But thank you very, very much. Hi there, so I think it's Hi going there. to take over to, to me. Is that sound okay? okay. So are we getting a lot of echo? Yeah, I just heard that. Um, is it better now? Uh, yes, it is. I don't know what just happened. Yeah, sorry, I heard all the echo as well. Um, thank you very much for having us this afternoon. Just whilst those slides are changing, I can introduce myself. My name is Caroline. I look, I, I work and was a student at the University of Essex. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the University of Essex and then we'll have some photos and the slides behind. Uh, we are a university known for being both research intensive and well regarded for our teaching. Now, I used to always question what that meant as a student, but being a research university means you are taught by academics that are actively involved in their subject. So we try and make all of our teaching as international and as relevant to today's society as possible. Next slide, please. Thank you, Holly. We, yeah, next slide, it went back. We are a campus university close to London. So for me, I love the campus. I really miss working on campus as well. And um, that's a picture of our Colchester campus. Everything is 10 minute walk apart from the accommodation, the teaching, the sports facilities, cafes, bars, restaurants. We've even got a doctor's surgery, a bank um, and a hairdresser's on campus. Um, so it's very convenient, but very safe and very friendly. You get a kind of a good vibe. Um, but we're also close to London, so we have the benefit Benefit of being one hour from London but a campus university and um, it's a lot cheaper being outside of London. We're really proud that we were awarded the Times Award at the end of 2018 for University of the Year for a range of, of different reasons and we're well known for um, our social sciences so we're top five in the UK and we're top for politics, international relations um, and lots of things kind of pol political related. We are a very international university, so we have students from 140 different nationalities and we are ranked fourth for our international outlook, which takes into account both the staff and student nationalities, but also the international opportunities for you as a student. So I went to California for part of my degree. We have um, lots of study abroad and partnership opportunity and exchanges that you can get involved in in Hong Kong, Brazil, Costa Rica. So if you're interested in coming to study in the UK but doing some extra um, and some kind of getting some more international experience then it's really good to do it at Essex because we charge a very very minimal fee for that. I mentioned our original campus which you can see there is in um, is Colchester. We also have a campus in Southend and a campus in London that's purely for our acting school as well. Next slide please. Now, we're going to try, as technology has gone so great so far, to play a video. Please do let me know if the sound doesn't play, but rather than me talk, this is interesting. Can't hear the sound. 
sorry, Holly, bless us to sort out all of this. <laughs> Still can't hear the sound. So we will, we tried, doesn't matter. Um, it's on our website. You can find it on kind of YouTube and Vimeo as well. But it's, I really like it because it is done by current students and kind of talking about what it means to be an Essex student. It's talking about how we want students that are going to get involved. You know, I mentioned about our kind of our classes are based on a lot of research and we want students that are going to ask questions and challenge convention. And it's not just about the study, which is kind of one of the things that drew me to Essex. I wanted to get involved in lots of things like having a part time job, learning a language on the side. I mentioned study abroad placements and um, I wanted to join you know, a sports club debating society, model UN, things like that. So that's kind of what the video is saying, but we can stop that, Holly, and go to the next slide, please. And I mentioned kind of our location. So all around the southeast, all within an hour of London, but outside of London, as I mentioned, so cheaper. We have six airports within two hours as well. So really easy to get around the UK, but also um, to Europe uh, and the rest of the world as well. And down in the south, we uh, like to appreciate um, and having the best weather as well. Next slide, please. So these are the departments that we do. Um, based into three different faculties. I mentioned being well known for social sciences, so the politics comes under the government, economics, business school, sociology, uh, language and linguistics. Um, but you can see a huge range there, very practical acting courses. Um, our law school is um, highly regarded and we do things like a double degree in French law. We do a, a two year condensed law program you can do and a range of undergrad law and then psychology, maths, the sciences, um, computing and engineering and health and social care. We don't do medicine as well. And the next slide will just show you all the different courses because I know even with the department names, it's still hard to know kind of what different courses you can do. So you can see a huge range there. We try and make our courses as practical as possible. And I mentioned there's extra uh, sandwich placements and year in industry and different things that you can get involved in as a student. Next slide, please. And there's just a picture overall view picture of the Colchester campus. As I say, I really miss it, miss being by the lake in the sunshine. Um, but everything, as I said, was convenient and really easy to get around. Next slide, please. And just really quickly on our entry requirements and costs and scholarships. I know it's a lot to take in. There's a lot going on in that slide. We generally are looking for 30 IB points or three Bs at A levels. Um, because you're being taught in English, you shouldn't have to do an English language test to, uh, at Essex. And we have some quite generous scholarships, especially for EU students who are now having to sadly pay international fees. Um, for EU students at undergraduate level, we have a £5,000 discount as well. Next slide, please. And just really quickly, if you want to follow us on any of social medias, we have student takeovers so you can speak to real students. I'm going to tell you Essex is great and I loved it, but I was a student 15 years ago. Um, but you can email um, myself. So as I mentioned, my name is Caroline or any of my colleagues. Um, the email admit at Essex comes through to all of us. Thank you very much. And we'll obviously ask questions uh, throughout or after. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Holly from Sussex. I'm just trying to load Lancaster's slides at the moment. Yeah, no problem. Thanks very much, Holly. And, and hello and, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll start introducing myself. Uh, my name is Tom Yep, from Lancaster University. Um, I am also an ex-student from Lancaster. I graduated back in 2012, uh, which I keep saying is recent, but it's getting less and less recent every time I say that. Um, so yeah, any questions at the end of this presentation that you have about particularly about life as a student, or if you want to find out any more details, uh, you're very welcome to get into touch, in touch with me. Uh, but I hope this presentation will be useful 
Um, at Lancaster, we are a relatively less heard of institution, um, but we do have a lot of reasons um, to make ourselves known and a lot of things that we like to shout about. So I'm going to go through some of the key things that make us stand out as an institution and that might make us a good choice uh, for you to come and complete your degree. Um, in the UK if that's what you're deciding to do. Um, as a very quick introductory slide, um, you can notice this photo in the middle is of our campus. We are a campus-based university and it is a very green campus uh, surrounded by the British countryside. Um, so any students that are perhaps looking for a place where they can have a bit of a relaxed, healthy environment and take time to focus on their studies, um, we're quite an ideal place to be able to provide that. Um, we are a short distance away from the city of Lancaster, um, which is a small historic city. You can see in the top left photo, uh, we have a picture of Lancaster Castle, which originated as a Roman fort. Uh, so there's a lot of park space normally in normal times there's a big music scene. Um, so we do have the best, of, we are fortunate enough to have the best of both worlds um, of having that city and our campus uh, just a short bus ride away from the city centre. And um, the top right picture is some of our accommodation. Um, but during this presentation, I'm going to focus on mostly showing you pictures and describing the campus to help paint a bit of an impression of what life is like on campus. Um, any particular details of course specifics, um, you're welcome to get in touch with me or of course we have all of this information on our website. Um, but just to give you a general overview, we do offer a wide range of courses across the Faculty of Health Sciences, of Science and Technology, um, Health Sciences, uh, the Management School, and our School of Arts and Social Sciences. In terms of entry requirements, we'll generally look for uh, two A's and a B for the majority of our courses or equivalent. Um, but yeah, I hope you find this presentation useful. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so the first thing um, that we like to shout about is that we are very fortunate to be a high ranked institution. Uh, despite being relatively young, Lancaster was established back in the 1960s um, and we're very proud that we've climbed the league tables in a sh the short amount of time that we've been around. Um, currently, we've retained our position that we had last year in the top 10 of the three major UK league tables. Um, obviously, league tables take into account a wide range uh, of things, um, including um, funding spent on facilities, student staff ratios and diversity within the student population and things like that. So we're very proud to, to have had our quality recognised in the high uh, institutional rankings of three main UK league tables. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what we would say uh, makes us stand out from other equally high ranking institutions is that we uh, consistently rank highly in the student satisfaction uh, rankings. So this is a survey completed by the students themselves um, where they rate uh, how satisfied they were with their course quality and the university in general. We're very proud that, that we perform well in this. Um, there's a, a big part of this is due to our high quality facilities, which I'll show you more of later on in the presentation. Um, there is a bit of a joke on campus of, of what is the worst thing about studying at Lancaster, and we generally all agree that there's always a building site somewhere, which is a little bit annoying, but it's because we're consistently reinvesting and developing our, our um, facilities so that students can maximise their student experience and have the best chance of succeeding at their course. Um, and this is reflected in, in, in our satisfaction rankings. Um, another reason why we, we perform highly in this is that we take student welfare and support extremely seriously. Um, next slide, please. You can see here we offer a range of student support services and um, these are all available from the first day that you arrive on campus. Um, so if you are a student that feels that you might benefit from such services and then we're here to help and, and what we'd say is um, if you do come and study with us and you experience any difficulties certainly don't suffer in silence we have a range of support services available and we just encourage you to access them um, and these support services um, in helping students make the most of their student experience is further enhanced by the fact that we're one of the few institutions in the UK that operates a collegiate system uh, next slide, please. If you haven't heard of a collegiate system, that's OK. What that means is that the university is divided down into eight undergraduate colleges and one postgraduate college. So if you come and study with us, you'll apply to join one of these different colleges. They all have different characteristics. 
Um, from my perspective as a student, uh, the main advantage that they have is they make it easy to settle in in that first year and start making friends. Um, being part of a small college community rather than just one member of the big university makes it really easy to get to know people and to keep in touch with people and, and makes a very strong community within the colleges. It also makes for a really fun environment of inter-college sports competitions, college socials and things like that. So for me, this college system was a big positive of studying at Lancaster. It made it really easy for me to, to settle in in that first year, make friends and feel like I was part of the university. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, cool. So now I'm just going to show you some photos of the campus. To obviously, ideally, we'd be able to welcome you to the campus and show you around, but hopefully this will be a good substitute in place to help give you an impression of what the campus looks like. So this is our accommodation um, some of our accommodation. Um, you might have noticed on the first slide um, that the campus accommodation at Lancaster has been awarded the best um, university halls in the UK eight times in the last 10 years um, to recognise its quality. We know Good quality accommodation is very important to you, especially if you're coming from abroad. Um, so you can rest at ease knowing that, that our campus accommodation is of a very high quality and being in the north of the UK, um, relatively affordable. Our accommodation starts from about £90 per week, um, inclusive of bills. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so this is the main campus square. So this is where you'll meet. All our student support services and employability services are located here. Uh, also the library and the main study facilities. You'll then travel up and down what is called the spine to access the rest of campus. Uh, next slide, please. Anyone interested in the management sciences? This is the new building of our management school uh, where you might be based for some of your lectures and activities. Uh, next slide, please. Any potential engineers? This is the engineering faculty building. Um, from my own opinion, if I'm ever a millionaire, I'm going to hire the architect who designed this building because it, to design my house because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's got a lot of natural light and the same as um, all the study spaces in Lancaster. They've been designed to try to maximise the student experience and make it an enjoyable and cohesive space um, for you to maximise your learning and enjoy the time that you're spending in there. Uh, next slide, please. So this is um, the mathematics building. I'm just showing this because this is quite representative of how a lot of campus looks. We're often referred to as a glass pane university. We have a lot of water features and a lot of green around campus, um, which, which makes for a, 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 help, a, um, a relaxing um, study environment. Um, next slide, please. And here is our um, Institute for Contemporary Arts and the windmill, which is contributing power to the campus and helping us work towards our green energy uh, goal commitments. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, the sports centre. OK, in terms of extracurricular activities as well, we do take those very seriously. Here's our new sports centre that's just recently been extended, includes everything you could want um, as a student, including a climbing wall um, and a swimming pool. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and that is everything for me. Um, I hope that was helpful um, and I look forward to answering any questions you have um, once we're finished. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tom. I'm just going to load up Royal Holloway next. And you should be able to see the slides shortly. Thanks very much, Jamie. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Holly. Uh, good afternoon. I'm hoping that I can have a very quick bit of audience participation and ask you to put your hands up uh, via Teams if you've ever heard of Royal Holloway before today. See if any hands go up. Fantastic. There's a few hands. Thank you so much. So uh, I'm going to take on a bit of a journey. So if you're in central London, you're at London Waterloo and you hop on a train for 40 minutes, you arrive at our campus in Egerman, Surrey. Now, the reason I mention that, and if we go to the next slide, is that, as Emma mentioned earlier, whilst we're part of the University of London, we're not actually in London. Um, we're actually based in Egerman, Surrey. So it's about seven miles to London Heathrow and about 40 minutes by train from Egham Station to uh, London Waterloo, which is our sort of main connection to London. 
Um, this is the sort of general map, so you can kind of see that dotted line, and that's roughly the sort of the, the train route to where we are. So going through kind of Richmond, Twickenham, and you then get to Egham and to our campus. And if we move to the next slide, you'll see a big picture of our campus map, and you can download this online. Just search Royal Holloway Campus Map if you want to get a feel for the general campus. We're situated in 135 acres of parkland. We're so lucky that our campus has been frequently named as one of the most beautiful campuses, not only in the UK, but actually in the world. Um, so if you have a look at the uh, buildings sort or of the colour coding, the purple on here is all of our different accommodation types that we have. The vast majority are either on campus, just across the road, or you'll see there's a little box at the top where we have two accommodation options. So about a, a mile, mile away and we run a bus uh, for free to those two options. The big building that you'll see there that's called the Founders Building, that's one of the things that we're really known for. It was opened uh, with the campus by um, Queen Victoria, which is why we have the royal uh, name and Holloway is after our um, founder of the university, uh, thus the Founders Building. The blue colour coded buildings are all the various different academic spaces that we have um, at, at the university. And one thing I would really urge you uh, to do is have a look at the virtual experience that we have online. This gives you a chance. It's uh, segmented into two different sections, study and life. The study section allows you to look at lots of different academic facilities that we have on campus. If you don't have a chance to visit before you make um, before you make potential UCAS choices, uh, it's really good to have a look. It's everything from, for example, a physics laboratory. So for example, we have low temperature uh, labs to our, um, our working observatory on campus through to our our work, our theatre that we have on campus through to biological sciences laboratories. A great chance to kind of get a feel for sort of where you'll learn day to day, including lots of lecture theatres. And then we have the life section, which allows you to have a look at some of those sort of day to day facilities that you'll use, such as our, our library um, and various different other sort of student life based facilities, including being able to have a look at some examples of different accommodation rooms. So as you're starting to think about what you may want from university accommodation, you can have a look at some 360 degree panoramas of what you maybe will get for your money uh, based on what type of facilities you want when it comes to student accommodation. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please, I'll go through just a few stats and information about Royal Holloway. So we have around 11,000 students uh, currently at Royal Holloway University of London, of which the vast majority of those are actually undergraduate students. So we have a, 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 a high proportion of undergraduate students in terms of our student population. Uh, we're very lucky to have a, a global student body and a global uh, alumni community, around 90,000 alumni in 165 um, countries at our last, uh, last um, count. Uh, in terms of university rankings, uh, in the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide for 2021, we're actually ranked in the top 25 universities uh, in the UK. Uh, a few other universities have mentioned scholarships. One thing I'll just make you aware of, our scholarships change every year so for example if you're applying for 2022 entry we usually advise you to have a look on our website around late october time of the year before you're going to apply to see what the scholarship offering is going to be in that next year uh, one thing i wanted to raise was uh, about employability we've had a few mentions already about um, employment statistics there's a survey that's currently carried out every year from final year students once they leave us uh to ask what they're up to once they leave the university this data is from 2018 that you'll see there but using this data set and this includes eu students as well uh 91 of international students were employed or in further study within six months and that's uh, generally generally across the board at the university from a 2018 data set we're really proud to have lots of ways that we support students with thinking about your career from the moment you join us at royal holloway including having a fantastic career service uh, they've adapted uh, to obviously to, to the current um, pandemic. There's lots of uh, virtual events. In normal times, we'll have not only careers fairs and graduate fairs for thinking about what you're going to do after university, but we also have lots of part-time jobs fairs throughout the year to have a think about what employment you might want to seek whilst you're with us, including thinking about um, placement opportunities as well. Uh, if we move to the next slide, this is a broad overview um, of the different subject areas. I wasn't able to list everything that we offer. Um, about A-level requirements, they really do vary. We move from three A's to around three B's, depending on the course that you choose. 
one thing I'll just highlight is that depending on your major and minor subjects, so whether you're doing joint honours, that can have an impact on the requirements. So, for example, if you looked at English and then English and drama, you may find you have a very different A-level requirement. So do make sure on our website, on our general course finder, you can drop down A-level requirements for every single course um, that we have at the university, including some of our foundation options, if that was something that you were looking to potentially uh, look at studying. Uh, one other thing for me to mention um, about Royal Holloway is that we really want to speak to you as you're uh, making your choices. We have run lots of virtual events um, throughout the year, including online open events right now. But more importantly, there are chat functions on our website to speak not only to current students at the university, but to speak to our team in the international student recruitment team. So if you don't want to send an email, but you just want to ask a very quick question, uh, we have uh, we make use of a service called UniBuddy where we have staff and students online. So if you have any questions after today, if after the presentation you want any more information about Royal Holloway, please get in contact with us. We'll be really happy uh, to answer any more questions. I will leave it there. And I, am I handing over to, to you, Holly, or to, to Plymouth next? Um, Anna will go up next. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now um, and the floor will be Anna's. Thanks very much, Jamie. No, this is not working fine, Anna. I can see your screen. You can see my screen. What exactly are you seeing? Sorry, I'm lost now. Your title uh, page. Do you? OK, well, that's good then, because <laughs> I can't see it. Right, you can see my title page. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna and I work for the University of Plymouth. I am an interna uh, work in the international office at the University of Plymouth um, and can you still see my screen? Yes. Sorry, something is going. I, something is going wrong with me here. I do apologise. Sorry, guys. Um, there we go. Uh, slideshow from the beginning. Right. There we go. Can you see the slides then? Yes. Perfect, sorry. So we are a uh, modern university. Uh, we do go back something like 150 years and we were founded as the Royal School of Navigation, um, but we nevertheless would be classed as a modern university. We are very strong um, in our research and our teaching, um, but also when it comes to students, clubs and societies and the student lives as such, you will see that our students tend to be quite happy and quite satisfied with what they find on campus. So we do have over 160 different sports clubs and societies on campus. One of the things that I do want to uh, draw your attention to um, and something that I'm very proud of is that two years ago in the What Student Choice Awards, which is where students themselves are being asked about their experiences at a certain university, we actually became number four for internet for in the international category. So what that means is that the students who are studying with us from abroad did feel that they are really well supported and were quite happy with us on campus. Now, for those of you who do not know where Plymouth is, uh, don't be ashamed. I didn't know until about um, 15 years ago when I moved to Plymouth. We are in the southwest of the country, so you've got a map of the United Kingdom here. London, I'm very sure every one of you will know where that is. You hop on the train um, that leaves more or less every hour and three hours later you get off um, at Plymouth. We are the largest city in what we call the southwest of England. Uh, Plymouth um, is, as I said, in the southwest of England and therefore we have a relatively mild climate. That will be good news for you guys from Gibraltar because uh, I uh, don't think that you will appreciate a lot of snow and a lot of cold uh, because I'm really used to that. Um, we or the Plymouth as a city sort of has branded itself as uh, Britain's ocean city and when we uh, go to the next slide and see the campus, the city centre and the campus of the university, you will see why we are calling ourselves Britain's Ocean City. So hopefully this is working. Let me have a look. Is the virtual tour, um, can you see that? It's not moving at the moment. Have you clicked on the word marine station? Uh, let's have a look. It's not moving at all. 
Not at the moment, no. Okay, well, don't worry then. So um, this is not working. So what you see here basically is um, the campus and the city centre. Down here, all the red blobs are uh, campus buildings. So we've got the arts building here. Uh, we've got the marine station down there where all, all of our marine science are being taught. We have student accommodation here on the left hand side. Um, and then over there, you just have to cross the street basically um, and you are right in the city centre. So Plymouth is quite different from Royal Holloway in that we are not set somewhere in the midst of a beautiful countryside, but we are really in the city centre. The good news though is that all the teaching facilities and accommodation facilities are really in walking distance. And all you need to do is keep on walking a little bit, about 10 minutes, and you are down by the seaside, which is quite stunning. And it is a great place for students, for staff, just to stay, to hang out a bit, to refresh their mind and their body and their soul, um, and tends to be a very nice area. Uh, quite a lively area as well and actually that is one of the main reasons why I um, and a lot of students and staff have chosen Plymouth to be their home. It is just this amazing setting. And once you have lived somewhere near the sea, as you probably will agree with me, you don't really want to live anywhere else. Now, the University of Plymouth is a comprehensive university. That means that we are teaching a lot of different subjects everything from medicine to the arts to business and I will not go into detail about every single program that we offer because you would probably fall asleep and my colleagues would want to kill me um, but the different courses that we offer are basically put into three different um, uh, faculties and the first one that we've got here is the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Now uh, we offer here what basically is, you know, it's on, on the package. So everything that's got to do with engineering, mechanical, robotics, civil is hosted in the Faculty of Science and Engineering as well as the biological and the chemistry sciences. But one thing that you might not have heard about or might not have thought about, uh, which you can find in our Faculty of Science and Engineering as well, is our course is Marine and Ocean Sciences. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a uh, in a minute. Um, the next big faculty, the number two of the three, is our Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Business. Um, so there you find uh, all the creative arts programs, the performing arts programs, dance, music, acting, but also things like English, like creative writing and, and uh, anthropology or history. In the business school, you would you would find what you would expect of a business school. So traditional business management programs, but also things which again, you might not have thought about in the first instance, like shipping logistics, like human resource management. So those are all undergraduate programs that you can study uh, in our business school. And last but not least, we've got our, uh, we also got uh, courses like education, predominantly primary education um, and early childhood studies in that faculty, but also things like law, criminology uh, and international relations. Last but not least, there's our Faculty of Health. Um, and there are the five schools that we have in our Faculty of Health. Um, there is the school, uh, there's the medical school where we offer obviously medicine and dentistry. A word of warning, it is very competitive to get into either of those two programmes. We would normally be looking at around three A's and you must sit the UCAT test for that. If you have any questions with regards to entrance to the medical school, please ask me later or you know, send me an email. I'm more than happy to chat about that. Uh, then we also have all the other programmes um, sort of that are aligned or allied to uh, health and to medicine, like the health professions, nursing, um, psychology as well, and the biomedical sciences. As I said a minute ago, um, we do a lot of work when it comes to the ocean sciences and to the marine sciences. And in fact, uh, the University of Plymouth is home to the largest and to the first marine institute in the country. What that means is that you have over 3000 different members of staff, researchers, students um, that do something that has to do with the ocean sciences. Now, the University of Plymouth has 20,000 students. 
Um, we have about 3,000 members of staff, 2,500 members of staff. And so if 3,000 of that community has got something to do with marine and uh, ocean sciences, that obviously means that this is a very important part of what we are doing at Plymouth. So what I would always say to students, if you're thinking of anything to do with the marine sciences, with the ocean sciences, with shipping, do you think of Plymouth? Because this is something that we really are quite well known for, not just in the UK, um, but in the world. The last thing I want to say uh, is just a few things about accommodation, because that is something that students obviously do ask. That you do not study just in, in the university, but you do want to live somewhere. So all of our accommodation is within five to ten more, uh, minutes walking distance to campus. Um, the good news for any student is that uh, there is a great variety of um, accommodation available, and that means that the prices are relatively decent. We have one of the lowest living costs in the country, and students are very much in control of how much you want to spend and can spend on accommodation. So that, and especially in the current situation, is probably a good thing to keep in mind. You don't have to rush and get your accommodation sorted. You can actually take your time um, for sorting out your accommodation. That leaves me at the end of what I had to say. Um, by the way, for those of you who are seriously thinking about uh, coming to Plymouth, we always have a good number of students from Gibraltar coming and studying with us. It's about, you know, it's about a handful that join us every year, and I would be more than happy to get you into contact with current or with past students from your part of the world. OK, and that's me done. Uh, thank you so much, Anna, and thank you, everyone. Um, so I, my name is Holly. I've been the voice of God throughout this um, <laughs> presentation so far with all my colleagues. Um, but I am last but hopefully not least to present to you about my university. I hope you can all see my screen OK. Um, and I will be talking to you for the next few minutes about the University of Sussex. Uh, we are located right on the very south coast of the UK, much like Plymouth, actually, but we're a lot more more west, as you'll see um, on the on the map that just zoomed in there. We're also a, a campus university, so like some of my other colleagues, um, the University of Sussex campus looks relatively similar to some others. So the campus university environment just means that everything is all in one place. So that includes your accommodation, your learning buildings, your sport facilities, leisure facilities, things like um, supermarket, um, shops, uh, hairdressers, bars, restaurants, cafes, something like that, all, all, all in one place essentially. We're classed as a medium sized UK university, so we have around 17,000 students. That sounds like a lot and it is a lot, um, but there are many universities that have over, say, 25 or 30,000 students and then other universities that have maybe around 8,000. So we're somewhere nicely in the middle. Um, over a third of our students are from outside of the UK. Depending on what league table you look at, we're within the top 40 in the UK and top 160 in the world. We have a fantastic graduate employment rates, 96% of our students students within six months of graduation are in graduate level work or full time further study such as a master's or PhD. Um, and my favourite stat about the university is that Brighton has been voted the happiest student city in England. I like that one. Now, in terms of our subjects, much like my colleagues, we have lots and lots of different subjects available. So we will have time at the end of this session if you want to ask any particular questions to any of the universities that have presented today or indeed about the UK in general. But the subjects that the University of Sussex in particular offers are coming up on the screen at the moment. You can do some of these as dual degrees um, as well. My degree, I used to do um, criminology and psychology as a double one. So you can combine some of the subjects if that's something that you're interested in. But in total, we offer over 200 different degree programmes when you take into account all of the different subjects and the combinations that are available at the university. In terms of our entry requirements, again, it will vary from subject to subject, but broadly speaking, most of our degrees ask for between two A's and one B to one A and two B's for direct entry. There's a handful that are three A's to get into, things like medicine, for example. Most of our degrees don't require any specific subjects at A level, but a few of them do, mainly the mathematics, science and English based degrees. But again, please feel free to ask me or my colleagues um, for specific degree requirements at any of our universities today and we'd be very happy to answer your questions. 
We actually have two routes into Sussex. So the slide before introduced you to our direct route, which comes in at year one of study. Um, and then you normally would study for three years or perhaps four years if you do a study abroad year or work placement and then graduate. But we do also have a foundation entry. This isn't an international foundation um, specifically. We have that and it's something entirely separate. This one is just an academic foundation based on your area of interest. You would normally need a minimum of three C's at A level and it's a year of study at the start of a degree. So it's called a year zero in effect and it turns a three year bachelor's into a four year bachelor's and you can do your foundation in the academic area of arts and humanities or life sciences, business, computing, creative technologies, um, engineering, mathematics, physics, psychology or social sciences. Our foundation degrees lead to absolutely any degree at the university except medicine, music or teacher training. But anything else at the university, you can do foundation if you want to come to a university like Sussex, but either have the wrong subjects or overall lower grades. We have one of the largest provisions of accommodation of any UK university. We have over 6,000 rooms available on campus, including some very new accommodation that's only just opened. Um, and they're a bit empty at the moment, to be honest. Um, around half of our accommodation is en suite and around the other half is um, shared facility bathrooms and you would share between one to eight other students depending on what block you were in. It is all self catered at the university so we don't offer a meal plan but you can buy breakfast, lunch and dinner either at one of the canteens, restaurants or the co-op supermarket we have on campus and if you don't want to live with us on campus in your first year we also have halls in the city which is Brighton um, or uh, you can privately rent if you want to. Now, our university looked like it was in the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of a national park, which gives us a very unique and beautiful setting. So if you like the great outdoors, the University of Sussex is a great location, but we're actually very close to Brighton, which you can see in the horizon there, the skyline of Brighton and the beautiful sea just beyond it. So in terms of getting from the city, uh, the university, sorry, to the city, the quickest way is by train. It takes just under 10 minutes. Um, you can also take a bus, which generally takes between 20 to 30 minutes. And then from Brighton, our nearest airport is London Gatwick, which is 30 minutes away. And we are one hour directly south of London. So it's very, very easy to get around both the campus and into the city by public transport or, of course, up to our local airport or our capital. Um, if you haven't been to Brighton before, I would really suggest if you get the time at some point, do come for a weekend. You won't regret it. It'll be really good fun. But our city is a really, really beautiful setting. The beach isn't sandy, I'm afraid, but it doesn't stop people from coming to visit. It's a very popular, welcoming seaside um, city to come and visit and, as I said, have a spend a weekend. But it's a wonderful uh, city to be a student in. Um, I have very fond memories myself. We also have a really cool palace um, called the Royal Pavilion, which is now a museum and really, really good fun to look in um, as well. And Brighton is also very well known for its shopping. We, of course, have a shopping mall like every other city, but we're actually very well known for our individual boutique shopping in a district called the Lanes, which is absolutely brilliant. You can get lost in there for many, many hours looking at all of the, um, the boutiques, the cafes, the bars, restaurants, the tattoo parlors, the record stores, the sweet shops, the vintage clothing. If that's your thing, it's a really good place to go shopping. Um, that was just a very quick run through from me about the University of Sussex. As I said, I wanted to leave lots of time for questions, so we have around 15 minutes in total. Thank you so much for tuning in to the, um, all of the university presentations um, today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, so we should go back to our main screen together. Can I ask all of my university colleagues please to turn their cameras um, back on? And I will hand over, if that's okay, to Miss Mason um, to chair questions if that's all right but thank you so yes. much for having us all today oh no it's brilliant and so lovely to to hear from you from all these different areas of the uk which is which is fantastic such a wide range for our students to hear about so over to you i have some questions but i'm going to wait for the six formers who may well have some of their own so can you put your hand up if you've got a question and i'll tell the universities so has anybody got a question at the moment about anything at all OK, maybe I'll kick off. Can we talk about finance a little bit? Um, so uh, very recently, the UK government um, confirmed that if we if you've been resident in Gibraltar for three years, you will count as O2 UK normal fees. And that's completely different, uh, six formers, from the um, scholarship uh, which the GIB government has been giving. We haven't had confirmation of that 
um, yet. But as long as you've been resident in GIB for three years, you will get the, the UK fee status. And obviously, some of you live in Spain and, and uh, potentially other areas too. So their big concern, obviously, is the, is the fees at the moment. And I know that there's been some movement potentially in Wales and even Scotland as well. Um, in terms of reducing fees for international students. Have you got any thoughts on that or help for our, our students who aren't um, going to count as O2 UK? Any thoughts on that? Sure, sure. Um, we, can, we can all take it in turn. So it's on. Um, essentially, there, it's down to each individual university, really. So we're, we're all very aware of what's happening for students that are domiciled in the European Union. Um, and universities are all taking a different approach where possible to support particularly this current year group um, going through during the transition period. And of course, for future cohorts of students who are living in the European Union as well. Um, if we want to, we can all say if there's anything in particular that we are doing um, for EU students or international students in general in the forms of scholarships or fee discounts or anything else that we're doing, if that would be helpful to your um, students. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not a one size fits all approach for um, England. We're all English universities here today, which is which is a shame. It would be helpful. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, as I'm talking in terms of what Sussex has at the moment, we have um, £5,000 scholarship available. It's for the first year of study only. Students do need to apply for it um, as well, but that's available to students living anywhere in the world except the UK. So that would be anyone who is in the overseas fee category rate, which EU students would now be included as for 2021 entry. Um, but we do have that available and I'd be very happy to send through um, a link if that would be helpful, but it is on our website. Lovely, thank you. Maybe I can go second and then leave my colleagues to add anything if they wish. Um, the situation at Aston is similar to what it is in Sussex. Um, so until now, EU students were eligible to take a loan and they weren't eligible for the majority of the scholarships we normally have for overseas students. Um, and at the moment, what I've shared in my slides previously, um, the scholarship uh, packages that we've got now between 2,000 to 8,000 um, pounds, these are now um, open to EU students as well. And that would include uh, students who live in Spain. Yeah, the same, the same is in Plymouth. Um, we have international uh, scholarships available. Uh, we do not have specific scholarships for European students because the university is rather cautious uh, that we don't discriminate against non-European students. So every every university, as, as Holly said, takes a different approach and we take a very cautious approach. Um, but uh, at least we have a variety of international scholarships available, which are obviously available to Spanish students um, as well. And they are automatic scholarships if you exceed our entry requirements and that will be £2,000 and they can be carried over for the entire duration of your studies. But we also have excellent scholarships which are up to 50% of your tuition fees and that would be an application for, for outstanding um, for outstanding students. It really as a you know it really is very important that students take a very close look at the scholarship pages on each individual university because it really is different from university to university and even within the university it is different from course to course sometimes. So really it takes a, quite a bit of research to get exactly the information that you want and need. Um, just to come in from City, so um, again, similarly to, to, to Plymouth, um, we have a direct overseas new scholarship, resident scholarship, um, which is worth £9,000, um, but it's only available for your first year. Um, but that's a brand new, brand new scholarship. Um, at City, nearly 20% of our um, students were EU, so it's a, a big, big loss for us, obviously. Um, but we want to support students as much as we can and we hope that offering this scholarship um, to some of our students will be really really helpful in this transition time. Uh, yep yeah, so um, at, at Raw Holloway uh, we we do have a uh, scholarship in place uh, so we are aiming to support students that have been affected by the change in status through the transition. So for eligible EU students starting their course with us in September 2021, we will award a fee reduction scholarship, which brings the fee 
in line with the fee paid by UK students, and this will apply for the duration um, of the course. Now, it's really important to note two things. There's a eligibility criteria available in the fees and funding section of our website, and we also haven't made a decision on the level of fee for EU students starting their course with us in September 2022. So uh, more information on there, really happy to answer any questions. All, all, of, our, all of my details are on our, on our website. All right, well, maybe we can move on from that. I think that gives a good message to our students that just to do their research and to, to look at uh, the, the individual subjects, even at each university, it's not one size fits all. That's a great message. And that's encouraging, I think, for lots of our, my students who are worried about fees. I can see some hands up. So I think uh, we have Ishika and um, Annika wanting to ask questions. Ishika, do you want to go first? Yeah, my question is for Warren Holloway. Um, do you have any study abroad opportunities? We do. So I think it's actually something we haven't kind of touched on, but I think I can uh, and everybody can sort of speak. But obviously just be aware that so we have had some things that have been advertised for Erasmus and just be aware that there are some implications uh, around uh, obviously the the, um, the agreement between the EU and the UK and Erasmus. So just be, be aware of that. I can talk more widely about study abroad, though, because we, we do have lots of I'm sure you know, most of the universities here also have lots of great opportunities. Uh, yes. I think the one thing I always note to students is to look at courses that maybe have an integrated option or ask you to add a year on. For the vast majority of our courses at Royal Holloway, we ask you to add the study abroad year on. So you would turn your degree from a, from a three year degree into a four year degree. Um, and yet yeah, lots of options available from uh, exchanges uh, in the USA to Canada, Australia, New Zealand. I'm sure sort of other colleagues can also talk about fantastic partnerships we have. It's something that we as UK universities really pride ourselves on and certainly something that we encourage um, yeah, students to take up. But, but for us, it's something that the students, uh, well, two things to note on this, that there sometimes there's some flexibility of a degree, but if you were in a position where maybe you may, and some students may need a visa now, it's certainly something to actually also check before you apply now as well, as there could be some implications uh, with needing to sort of state what you're looking to do throughout your whole timing a degree this is one of the big things that's changing and obviously I'm aware that uh, there may be students here that may may or may not require a visa but certainly I think it's something to check now is whether you may need to consider study abroad options before study or whether you will have that flexibility uh, when you join us uh, studying as well so a really good question be a lots of options and lots of information on the website as well Okay, that sounds great. I um, I studied uh, in America for a little bit as part of my English degree, and I, I thoroughly recommend that you all look at um, opportunities to study abroad because it's it's uh, life changing. I think to do something like that. Brilliant, Annika, over to you. Um, hello, I'm quite general. Um, I was wondering whether accommodation is offered at the university only for your first year, or is it um, throughout your degree? That's a great question. I think most of us will have, if we have on-campus accommodation, it will be for first year only. So would somebody like to speak if they do offer it beyond first year? We, we offer it at Essex as guaranteed for first year and then you can apply for second and third year or second and fourth year if you do study abroad. Um, so you have a chance, but it's not guaranteed. Um, at Lancaster, we have the same. And if students um, don't choose to stay on campus or don't manage to stay on the campus accommodation after that first year. We do have a student union housing association um, which owns or um, recommends a wide range of accommodation within the city. Um, so going through this um, service, you can make sure that your accommodation is going to be prop properly priced and proper quality. So you can rest assured that you'll still have um, good quality living arrangements, even if you do choose to leave the campus and live in the city. Um, I think I touched upon this in my presentation, but being part of the University of London, you do have access to the University of London Accommodation Hub. Um, so if you were thinking of doing that in your second and third year, using your unique um, student number, you would gain access to that. So that's, that's something and I benefit really being part of that. So there is lots of accommodation options available to students after the first year. 
And also, if you meaning by uh, university accommodation halls of residence, um, you, it might be useful for you to know that not uh, you do have halls of residence in the cities uh, which are not university owned. So a lot of us have, you know, halls of residence like from a groups called Unite or whatever, and they would often be just as far away from the campus as university owned halls of residence. And there you could normally, if you wanted to, you can stay your entire duration of your studies. You can spe spend in a, in a hall of residence and you probably wouldn't notice the difference whether it is university owned or whether it's not university owned. Brilliant. Any other uh, questions from anyone? I think we're nearing the end of our time now. So does anybody have one last question? You might you might uh, ask the, the question that everybody else wanted to, but was maybe a little bit shy. So has anybody got one last question for our, our panel today? I can't see any hands up. OK, well, that was that was really, really helpful. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, you know, changing our students' perspectives, widening their horizons on where they might um, go to at university. And we hope that maybe we'll see you in Gibraltar sometime and actually come and come and visit Prior Park in the sunshine. It's a horrible day today, but uh, <laughs> normally it's it's pretty sunny. So uh, we'd we'll love to come. Oh, well, we'd love to see you. So um, look forward to further communication in the future. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.